Hello and welcome to News on NTA International. I am Nancy Godiangoni, who our sign language personality is Shegu Ajayi. First, the headlines. Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary celebration continues with public lecture. Vice President Shati Mashur of modalities to deal with nation's social economic challenges. 78th session of UN General Assembly ends in New York. World leaders map out strategies to address climate change and Russia's war in Ukraine. And federal government backs global efforts at ensuring public access to information and protection of fundamental freedoms. And now the news in full. The federal government says the renewed hope agenda of the present administration will work out modalities in dealing with myriad of challenges in the social and economic sectors confronting the nation. Vice President Kashim Shatima gave the assurance at a public lecture to mark Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary at the banquet hall, Presidential Villa Abuja. Here we gather to honor Nigeria's journey to redefine its destiny. Today we stand on the precipice of history to reflect upon a nation that has defied the predictions of doomsayers, a nation that has become the metaphor of resilience. Over the past 63 years, we have not only survived, but thrived because of our collective resolve, our commitment to progress, and the enduring spirit of unity that binds us together. Actualizing the vision of renewed hope for socio-economic development through effective leadership is the theme of the Nigeria at 63 lecture. With the economic potentials of Nigeria, Vice President Kashim Shatima said, will be achieved through formulation and implementation of government policies and programs that are realizable towards the nation's aspiration of becoming one of the 20 largest economies of the world by 2030. We cannot renew the hope of the nation unless we deliver on our promise to drive post security and eradicate poverty. We cannot foster economic growth and nurture job creation unless we facilitate access to capital, enhance national security, and optimize the business environment for our enterprises. We are going to uphold the rule of law and fight corruption to design the Nigeria of our dream. We can't achieve any of these unless each citizen remains a strategic partner in pursuit of our ultimate national interest. So we have no excuse. We have no excuse to the Nigerian people that we cannot be able to succeed, particularly at this very trying time. We have people from the other side that are willing to come to us. And we are people as well who are willing to also go to that side for us to harmonize, to partner, to collaborate in ensuring that the Nigerian people get the best out of us. Let me assure you that beyond the celebration of the 63rd Independence Anniversary, the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation has a coordinating point for, implementing, for implementation of policies and decisions of government that has made full arrangements to document and carry forward the critical outcomes of the symposium with the highest level of political leadership. The eight point agenda are food security, poverty eradication, economic growth, job creation, access to capital inclusion, rule of law, and fighting corruption. The assemblage of ministers has answered many floating questions of inclusiveness be it on gender, youth, national unity, and or political stability and technical know-how. His cabinet setup has recognized the enormous potentials of certain sectors for the economy. Panel of discussants moderated by a veteran broadcaster, Cyril Stova, explored the lead paper which touched on public service, security, education, agriculture, and other sectors. The outcome of the discussions, government says, will be extended to civil societies, the labor unions, and the academics to enable the nation harness the best and most viable options for socio-economic development. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila. 
the National Economic Council has appealed to members of the Nigeria Labour Congress. and Trade Union Congress to shell the proposed industrial action. Industrial action and embrace dialogue considering its implication on the economy. This is part of resolutions made at the end of the 136th meeting of the council chaired by Vice President Kashim Shatima at the presidential villa. State House correspondent Abraman Jiblera reports. We'll bring you details of that report in subsequent bulletins. The Ministry of Labor and Employment has its own report circulating online and published by a newspaper that the President will announce wage awards and palliatives to workers during his October 1st Independence Day speech. The report, which is said to have emanated from a purported interview with the Director of Information at the Ministry, also claimed that a last-minute meeting has been scheduled for Tuesday between federal government and the Labor to avert the proposed strike. Director of Information Olajide Oshundun in a statement categorically states that the report is false and misleading and at no time did he make such disclosure. He enjoined members of the public to ignore the report as it is a total fabrication of an interview by the reporter to suit the narrative of their interest. Away from Nigeria, Burkina Faso's security and intelligence services say it has successfully foiled a coup attempt by some military officers on Tuesday. The military junta, in a statement, alleged that some officers and others had planned to destabilize the country and throw it into chaos. The authorities said some arrests have been made, through, though no details on how many were in custody. There have been recent reports of discontent within the military. On Tuesday, rumors of a brewing mutiny had uh, led hundreds of people to take to the streets of the capital, Ouagadougou, in support of the junta on the same day. The authorities suspended the French language news magazine, Une Afrique, accusing it of publishing articles discrediting the armed forces. U.S. Republicans launch impeachment inquiry hearings into Joe Biden on Thursday, escalating an eight-month corruption investigation that has failed to uncover evidence of wrongdoings by the president. The party says the information it has amassed warrants streamlining its multiple probes into an official inquiry empowered to unleash investigators from three House committees to subpoena Biden's bank records. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has accused Biden of lying about his knowledge of his son, Hunter Biden's business dealings, which Republicans claim corruptly benefited the Democratic leader when he was vice president. The Biden administration has dismissed the effort as a stunt, accusing Republicans of trying to distract voters days ahead of a looming government shutdown sparked by far-right lawmakers. Now, the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, came to a close, capping a week of intense debates and deliberations by world leaders on climate change and Russia's war in Ukraine. Kolo Mohamed has details. The high-level week of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly concluded with more than 190 speakers including 136 heads of state and government and 40 ministers having addressed the UN General Assembly during the general debate. UNGA President Dennis Francis identified common themes that signal member states' priorities, challenges and concerns going forward. He accentuated the need to invest more in education, particularly for girls, reform the international finance architecture to achieve accessibility, equity and justice in development finance, respect political independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity by ending all needless wars around the world with emphasis on Ukraine, embrace climate action by safeguarding the Earth's natural resources, preserving biodiversity and ensuring equitable access to clean air and water. 
United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and world leaders call for improved humanity to mankind in dealings around the world. I spoke to many leaders of the need to recognize that women's voices, aspirations, and rights matter at every level, from the grassroots to the global stage. And it begins with investing in education, particularly for girls. Let us be resolute in our commitment to inclusivity and to ensure that no woman, no man, indeed no one, is ever left behind. France said these global challenges demand full engagement in preparation for the 2024 summit of the future. Colom Mohammed, NTN News. Desperation by South American migrants to reach the United States has several times led to distortions in immigration policy. However, the U.S. is not relenting in trying to keep undocumented migrants and asylum seekers at bay. Details again with Kolo Mohammed. Dozens of desperate migrants attempt to reach the United States by swimming across the Rio Grande River in Mexico. Most of them were forced to swim back to the Mexican side of the river after being warned away by Texas authorities who reinforced barbed wire fencing on the U.S. side. A large number of migrants have been crossing into the United States from Mexico in recent weeks, piling pressure on the Biden administration to stem the flow of people as the U.S. 2024 presidential election race begins to heat up. The White House has struggled to manage an overburdened immigration system and critics have called for greater protection for migrants. Yeah, it is scary because I don't know how to swim and it's difficult to get across. Migrants cross the Rio Grande River to try to apply for asylum through the Eagle Eye. Kolo Mohammed, NTA News. Now, the need to ensure safety in the application of nuclear energy has been a global goal sought after by divergent agencies around the world. The global body that sees us a uh, regulator is the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, and it has held its 67th ordinary session where it called for accelerated and enlarged contributions of aton atomic energy to peace, health, and prosperity were advocated. Kolo Mohammed once more reports. The IAEA General Conference is held yearly and regularly in the month of September. The conference allows for enlarged synergy, appraisal of achievement levels regarding pursuit goals and decisions on new discoveries as it relates to the application of nuclear energy for the good, safety and prosperity of oil. The 2023 edition ends tomorrow, 29 September, in Vienna, Austria. And as it wraps up, communities have begun to emerge on enhancing nuclear and radiation safety, strengthening of bodies' technical cooperation activities, as well as effectiveness and improving the efficiency of energy safeguards, amongst others. UN nuclear chief has urged Iran to allow nuclear inspectors to see how to organize the continuity of our inspection effort in Iran. If anything, this proves that we, uh, more than ever, we have to be there. We have to, and we will not uh, stop our activities uh, there. Uh, but of course, uh, this decision is, is making our work far more difficult and necessarily. Sidelines and plenaries were held where decisions on appointments, synergy, budgeting and next conference dates were decided upon. Kolo Mohammed, NT News. Survivors and those mourning the victims of a fire that ripped through an Iraqi wedding claiming over 100 lives have filled the pews of a Christian mass Thursday, two days after the disaster. Mourners wept, ululated, and quietly embraced one another under the arches of the Syriac Catholic Church of al Tahira, where portraits of the dead lined their stairs, showing men, women, and children of all ages. I don't know what to say. There is pain in our hearts. A tragedy that will never be forgotten. 
there is anger and sadness, indescribable and without compare, said Najiba Yohana, 55, who lost multiple relatives. Authorities have blamed indoor fireworks that set alight ceiling decorations for the fire that quickly engulfed the reception center constructed from highly combustible buildings, materials that belched toxic smoke. At least 150 people suffered burns, smoke inhalation and crush wounds sustained in the stampede when the nearly 900 panicked guests tried to flee the reception center through its few escape doors. Thousands of representatives from Colombia's 11 major indigenous communities gathered in Bogota to express their support for President Gustavo Petro's uh, proposed economic and social reforms. Motivated by the government's commitment to defend their territories, the demonstrators carrying colorful flags and posters engaged in traditional dances and songs as they marched through the streets of the capital. Reports say the event, known as Mobilization Day, showcased strategically placed encampments throughout Bogota. The mobilization championed by President Petro is set to continue into the coming week, attracting hundreds of indigenous people from various regions in the city. Despite disapproval ratings reportedly exceeding 60%, Colombian president utilized the demonstration as an opportunity to advocate for his government's political agenda. He also committed to implementing a comprehensive peace strategy aimed at bringing an end to the nation's nearly six decade long armed conflict, a conflict that has claimed the lives of a minimum of 450,000 individuals. President Petro, who assumed office in August 2022, secured victory through pledges to reduce poverty and inequality. You're watching the news on NT International. More reports when we return after the break. Thank you for staying with us. The federal government has reaffirmed its commitment to supporting global efforts at ensuring public access to information as well as the protection of fundamental freedoms. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Latif Fabemi, SAN, disclosed this in a message to the 2023 International Day for Universal Access to Information and Dele Atumbi was there. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbu in the SAN, asserted that the event underscored the need for proactive disclosures by ministries, extra ministerial departments, and agencies of government. Latif Agbu in the SAN identified access to information as one of the basic pillars of democracy. He noted that the enactment of the Freedom of Information Act was Nigeria's deliberate effort to make government information available to the people. The development is aimed at promoting the principles of open governance. In our ever-evolving world, it is important that the government provides access to correct and adequate information in order to prevent false or misconstrued information from filling up any information gap. I therefore stand with you as partners in the growth and development of democratic norms through supporting access to correct and provide adequate information. Section 24 of the Act also encourages proactive disclosure by mandating public institutions to ensure that information referred to in this session is widely disseminated and made readily available to members of the public through various means, including print, electronics, and online sources. The International Day for Universal Access to Information is a reminder of global advocacy for freedom of information. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Meanwhile, 12 years down the lane, the Freedom of Information Act is still confronted with several challenges and the platform for FOI compliance and transparency ranking spearheaded by the International Center for Investigative Reporting with Accountability Lab Nigeria seek to address bottlenecks to information sharing. Austin Anyebe reports that for ministries, departments and agencies of government, to improve on service delivery and build public trust, accessibility to information, they said, should be more flexible while ensuring transparency and confidentiality. It allows for real-time updates in case of new information. It promotes transparency and trust. This FY Act has been a veritable tool for 
uh, journalists to ask information of public interest. And uh, once this feedback are gotten, then journalists can now push the information to the public domain for the general public to make use of. If the public service rules can be updated to include the Freedom of Information Act, then we think that it would be easy for compliance to improve in public service. Actors in information management recommend updating of websites to reduce response time, training of staff to be technology inclined, and boundaries confidentiality should be set. These, they stressed, will bridge information gaps, promote good governance, and curb corrupt practices. A valuable document to aid parenting for peace has been presented to the public. Elizabeth Omori reports that the documents launched by the Ministry of Women Affairs in conjunction with USAID and Mercy Corps is expected to serve as a guide for families, educational institutions, and Nigerians in the fight against violent extremism. Terrorism continues to pose a major threat to peace and security in most nations across the globe, undermining core values. For these reasons, the Parenting for Peace P4P Guide Peace Advocates say will assist in addressing threats of violent extremism from the home front. Minister of Women Affairs and other speakers insist the document will serve as a multi-sectoral response for the youth to have safe and inclusive society. The way you live with your husband in the house equally determines how your children will grow up to be. You have to open up a door for your children to feel free to communicate with you. Don't compare them with any other child. Your child is your child. For the sake of Nigeria, to be one and to be united, to be peaceful, we have to do something on the economic situation of the country. Other peace advocates urge parents and caregivers to be conflict sensitive. They recommend inclusion of the P4P in school curriculum by the Ministry of Education in Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is confident of bouncing back to its old winning ways. The party expressed the confidence of the presentation of the People's Democratic Institute's Establishment Committee report to the National Working Committee of the party in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The People's Democratic Institute, PDI, is the training and research arm of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. To the acting national chair. Efforts towards making it vibrant again brought about its establishment committee, chaired by the PDP Deputy Chairman South, Ambassador Tofi Karakbaja. The committee's major task is to recruit a director general to lead the institute as well as put in place a governing board. As a first step towards the vibe of the institute, the division of its building was rented, renovated, furnished, and queued for PDI to effectively engage the purpose for which it was established. This was made possible through the assistance granted to the party by His Excellency Nina Shiji, Abir Makibe, the Executive Governor for your state. The acting national chairman of the PDP, Ambassador Umar Ilya Adamagum, explained that the party's leadership allowed the committee to function without interference. We we'll look at the report as NWC holistically pdp leaders at all levels are enjoined to key into the party's efforts towards reviving the institute as exemplified by the governor of your state sheyi makinde timothy yusuf nt news the nigerian military has raided the residence and apprehended the district head of our local government area of nasarawa state and recovered smg G3 and FN rifles with several rounds of ammunition. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the director, Defense Media Operations Major General Edward Buba, announced this at a news conference in Abuja. It's the bi weekly news conference on ongoing armed forces operations across the country, and the director of Defense Media Operations has recorded some breakthroughs across flashpoints. Troops of Operation. Top is the arrest of a traditional ruler and recovery of firearms in Nasarawa state. Troops raided and apprehended a district head of 
away local government area of Nasarawa State. During operations, troops recovered one submachine gun, one G3 rifle, one unserviceable FN rifle, 19 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO ammo, and several rounds of 9 millimeter ammo. Similarly, troops raided criminal enclaves in Suleja and Tafa, smoking out high profile terrorists. Troops, in conjunction with personnel of sister security agencies, raided terrorist hideouts in Tafa and Suleja local government area of Niger State. During the operations, troops arrested two high profile terrorists and they are cooperating with ongoing investigations. Details of the recent operations indicate that. 91 kidnapped victims were rescued, 184 terrorists arrested, while 191 unrepented terrorists were eliminated during various operations. Overall, troops of Operation Delta State arrested 59 suspected oil thieves and other criminal elements. They destroyed 38 dugout pits, 21 boats, 57 storage tanks, and 34 illegal refining sites, among others. The defense headquarters enjoined Nigerians to see the ongoing manhunt against criminals as a collective responsibility. From the defense headquarters in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And that's it on the news. On behalf of Shegu Ajayi, who's been on sign language, this is Nancy Godiangunihu thanking you for watching.